Hi guys, my name is Anik Reis, I hope you're doing well and I welcome you to a new video. This time with a fresh new pair of glasses so I can finally see what I'm doing here. And the topic today will be the preference data store. Persisting data is essential in almost every Android app. Sometimes you only need to store like small flags, a feature is enabled or not, or any other stuff. In that case, creating a whole table in SQL, for example, might be an overkill. For that case, you could use the shared preferences, which is essentially just a key value store and yeah, store your flags in there. But the shared preference comes with a load of disadvantages. However, Android released the Jetpack Preference Data Store, which covers a huge load of these disadvantages. If you look at this table here, you can see a bunch of these disadvantages and also what the Preference Data Store brings for benefits. For example, we now have an async API um, implemented with flows, but on the other hand, we have no longer a synchronous API. Also, it's safe to call uh, the preference data store on the UI thread because it got moved to the dispatcher's IO thread under the hood. And also we have the option to yeah, listen for errors and also save them from runtime exceptions. Finally, we also have the option to migrate our shared preferences. But before we actually dive into the preference data store, let's take a quick look at a legacy example that implements these shared preferences. Now in Android Studio, let's have a quick look at what our activity is going to look like. We have a simple screen with a text here that says inactive and the button to toggle the flag. And if I click the button, oh, you can see a flag appears. And if I click the button once again, the flag disappears. That should be our starting point. And now let's have a quick look at the compose code. We have the shared pref activity here that holds a shared pref screen with the sample view model we are going to look at in a second. We receive the flag enabled from that view model with the collect as state with lifecycle function. Um, I already made a video about that. Make sure to check it out. And we can collect the flag enabled with that and pass it to our shared pref content composable. And here we just decide should we show the flag or not by using the animated visibility composable that um, leads to this small animation we just saw. And then we have the text that either uses active or inactive and the button which triggers the toggle flag. Now let's have a quick look at the sample view model. We are not using the regular view model, but the Android view model, which can automatically take the application as an input parameter. And that enables us to use the application context here. And we need the context because we want to initialize our custom class shared pref key value store that we were going to look at in a second. And we initialize the flag enabled state flow here with the current value of the shared preference. We then also implement the toggle flag function that just um, inverts the current state flow value and then updates the is example flag active in the shared preference and also updates the state flow itself. So, now let's take a look at the implementation of the chat preference. As you can see, the class is very simple. It uh, takes the context as an input parameter, has two constants here. And then we just hold a reference to the shared preference reader, one to the writer and one variable that says um, is example flag active. And now we can use these uh, these two helper functions here to um, update the value or read it. And that's essentially it to use the shared preference. Okay, now that we saw that, how can we actually migrate it? We start by declaring a new dependency. And that dependency will be our preference data store. So we use the Android X. Um, I have to cheat data store. Uh, data store 
preference and now we already get it here we use the uh, references and are good to go so we have now our pref data key values are here and once again we need the context as an input parameter import and now we declare a extension function on the context itself and call it data store of the type data store and import you see references as the type and now you see by preference data store as the delegate and here you should type in your preference data store i have often seen the um it's not an error but these don't use your um app name because if that changes also the <laughs> uh preference data so changes so some uh, hard-coded uh string here should be enough like example or something like that and now we declare a private object and we call it preference keys and because we only have one key that will be a really short object but whatever and now we declare a new variable and because we have only one flag we have a really short object here so we call it example flag and that is of type preferences key and because we have a flag it's obviously a boolean and now we just need to initialize it and we can use the boolean preferences key and you just type in preferences, you can already see that there's not only the Boolean preference key, but also a variant for double, empty, float, int, long, and so on. But because we have a Boolean flag, we need the Boolean preference key. And as an input parameter, we once again uh, name it. And in this case, it's just the example flag. However, please note that you are not allowed to use a flag name twice. If you do that, you will probably raise a class cast exception. And now let's come to the interesting part. We need two functions or rather two functionalities. We want to update the value and we also want to read it. So let's start by updating it. And we say um, um, update flag is active as an input parameter and now we say context and we also need to set this to a variable so we can access it and now we can use the data store and i just see that i misspelled it it's not that store but a data store and um and now we can um edit the data store with the edit function ah and of course we also because we earlier saw that this api has no synchronous version we need to run it in a coroutine and therefore we declare a function as suspendable or suspend and now inside this edit we receive the references and this preferences variable is of mutable preferences so it also implies that we can edit it so we access it preferences and here we need a key therefore we reference our example flag and quickly import it and now i can just say is active and it automatically knows that this flag is of the type boolean and updates it. And for the update part or update flag function, that's already it. There's nothing more to do. And uh, let's proceed with the function to receive the value. And I just realized that my image here is in the way, so I quickly move a little bit up. And now you can also see what I just uh, said the mutable preferences here. Now that we have that, let's proceed with the um, retrieving value. And 
as you saw in the view model, we um, synchronously access the shared preferences and yeah, just receive the flag value. However, as we initially saw, that is no longer possible because now we have only an asynchronous API. That means by reading out from the preferences, we don't just receive the actual value, but a flow of this value. And therefore we can either work around that and say on the flow, uh, give me the first value. So we would uh, once again have only the Boolean or we just rewrite our view model real quick and optimize it a little bit. So we will just pass the flow from the pref data uh, key value store down to our composable and just collect it there. So let's implement the function here real quick. We say watch flag and we finally want to have a flow of a boolean and we once again access the data store and here we can say um, data store dot data map and now we um, no longer receive the mutable version um, but the immutable version of the preferences and now once again we can access our value by passing in our example flag preferences key and if I return that value with map, you can see, oh, it marks an error because now it found Boolean because potentially there is no default value. And we just, we fix that by passing a false value if the value is not set and are good to go. So now back at our sample view model, we can replace the shared pref key value store now with our pref data key value store. And let's quickly do that. The good part is the constructor is essentially the same. And we can quickly rename that here and call it pref data key value store. And now we want to directly pass in our um, flag. And the flag enabled here now don't uh, no longer use the mutable state flow, but is still a state flow of type boolean, but we can get initialized in the init here. And now we just say flag enabled. You see pref data key value store, and we say watch flag, and now we call the famous state in function and here we say view model scope um, sharing started uh, can be lazily and also at the initial value we say set faults and that's essentially it so now as soon as someone registers on the flag enabled it will start collecting this watch flag. And now let's proceed with the toggle flag function. Because we still have a flag enabled state flow here, we can uh, access that value. And now let's um, replace this function with update flag. And we replace with the toggle flag. And because we now directly receive the updates from the flow, we no longer need to manually update a state flow. And finally, because this is a coroutine, we will use the view model scope and say launch to launch a coroutine. We don't need to put in a dispatcher because the preference key value store itself already defines one. Um, the IO dispatcher as we previously saw in this table. And now the last part is to try it out. So let's do that. And we are back at our activity here, our screen. I once again click the toggle the flag and the flag once again appears and disappears. As a quick bonus tip, I can show you one more thing. And as we initially saw, the 
Preference data store also allows you to catch errors. So what if somehow this data access don't work and like an IO section gets thrown? We can say here catch and uh, do something with that. But I have a quick helper function to actually um, yeah, facilitate this process. I call it catch and handle error. And what this function does is um, it's an extension function on the flow preferences, which is what you receive from this data here. So we can easily replace it with that function. And if you take a look, it's also the catch function we just saw here, but we just um, check if the exception is an IO exception. If that is the case, we just return an empty preferences. And in that case, here the example flag couldn't get any value because there is no example flag in the empty preferences and will return it false. However, if an exception gets thrown that is not of the XO exception, something uh, went horribly wrong and you may want to get notified about it. So if you have a logging tool or something like that, you should lock this exception. Otherwise, if this line gets executed, your app will probably crash. And that said, that's already it for this video. I hope you had some takeaways. In my opinion, the preference data store is very handy to use. It fixes many issues we had with the shared preferences. It is uh, safe to use. And also there are many possibilities for more helper functions. Uh, once again, check out my Medium article. I added some of these helper functions to that art article. Finally, like the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope to see you soon.